Good morning and welcome to Crossroads with George Kavor. Happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you and encourage you this day. Morning Carol, I hope you can all hear me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he encourage you. And I pray that the Lord will be very close to you this Thanksgiving day. Today is a day when we need to thank God for his faithfulness, his goodness, and his grace. I pray that each and every one of you will be blessed today. May God guide and keep each one of us in the center of his will. Today, November the 26th, Thanksgiving Day. And I want to bless each and every one of you and encourage each and every one of you today as we learn to count our blessings and to name them one by one. Welcome to each and every one of you. Good morning and I pray that you will be richly blessed and that God will guide and encourage each one of us today. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful morning, and I pray that you will be with us. Thank you that you are the unchangeable one. Thank you that you love us and you care for us. And I want to acknowledge that from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, your name, O oh Lord, is to be praised. As the psalmist has said, your faithfulness is as sure as the sunrise. And I pray that the Lord will help us to remember his goodness, his graciousness, his care, and his love for us. And I, precious Lord, want to acknowledge that you are the Lord and we want to give you the glory and the praise and we want to acknowledge that you O oh Lord are worthy of honor and praise and so Heavenly Father I pray that you will keep us in the center of your will and that you will help us to live according to your faithfulness. Precious Lord, I pray that you will speak to us from your word. And I pray, Lord, that you will keep us truly in the center of your will. Now, precious God, speak to us, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of the prophet Ezekiel chapter 34, and we'll be looking from verse 11 to 31. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11 to 31. Morning, Asha morning to each and every one of you this morning. May the Lord encourage and bless you abundantly. Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 11 to verse 31. For well, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them. As a shepherd looks after his sheep, his scattered flock, when he is with them, so will I look after my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered 
on a day of clouds and darkness. I will bring them out from the nations and gather them from the countries. And I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land. I will tend them in a good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. There they will lie down in good grazing lands. There they will feed in a rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will tend my sheep and have them lie down, declares the sovereign Lord. I will search for the lost and bring back the stray. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. But the sleek and the strong I will destroy. I will shepherd the flock with justice. As for you, my flock, this is what the Sovereign Lord says, I will judge between one sheep and another, and between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on the good pasture? Must you also trample the rest of your pasture with your feet? Is it not enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, this is what the Sovereign Lord says to them. See, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. Because you shove with flank and shoulder, butting all the weak sheep with your horns until you have driven them away. I will save my flock, and they will no longer be plundered. I will judge between one sheep and another. I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them. He will tend them and be their shepherd. The Lord will be their God, and my servant David will be prince amongst them. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of savage beasts so that they may live in the wilderness and sleep in the forests in safety. I will make them and the places surrounding my hill a blessing. I will send down showers in season. There will be showers of blessing. The trees will yield their fruit and the ground will yield its crops. The people will be secure in their land. They will know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from the hands of those who enslave them. They will no longer be plundered by the nations, nor will wild animals devour them. They will live in safety and no one will make them afraid. I will provide for them a land renowned for its crops and they will no longer be victims of famine in the land or bear the scorn of the nations. Then they will know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, the Israelites, are my people, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Sovereign Lord. Here is the word of the Lord. Good morning, Alex. Morning, Asha, JC Mozo, Carol. It's great to have all of you. Victor, are you there? So I am praying for each and every one of you during this wonderful day of Thanksgiving. It's a day when the United States comes together as friends and families to bless the Lord. The psalmist in Psalm 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his blessings. And so today we come together to thank the Lord. 
in Southern Africa when I first went there many years ago, uh, people would say, God is good. And the congregation would then echo and respond all the time. And the leader of the assembly would say all the time and the people would respond the Lord is good or God is good so this morning as we continue our focus on Christ the King I thought I'd go to the Old Testament to book to the book of the prophet Ezekiel and we're looking at verse chapter 34 and here is a prophetic judgment on the leadership of Israel and the revelation that God is going to take control. And uh, there are several things that the prophet identifies in this prophetic oracle. First of all, he says that there is inequalities and injustice in the land and that people have been scattered and uh, they have been ruled harshly and brutally by oppressive pagan kings and nations and he recognizes that they have no leadership the children of Israel they have no shepherd and the only way he can describe their plight is that they are scattered and they have been plundered and ravaged by wild animals and that no one cares for them no one looks out for their needs and he says because the leadership of israel the shepherds of israel that he refers to did not care for their sheep and they just looked after their own self-interest and so the Lord in verse 10 says, I am against the shepherds and will hold them accountable for my flock. I will remove them from tending the flock so that the shepherds can no longer feed themselves. I will rescue my flock from their mouths. And in verse 11 onwards, the Lord says, I myself will search for my sheep and look after them as a shepherd looks after his sheep scattered flock. I will rescue them from all the places where they were scattered. What a wonderful encouraging word. I will rescue them, said the Lord. Ezekiel 34, we're looking at verses 11 onwards. And so in verse 13, he says, I will bring them out of the nations and gather them from the countries, and I will bring them into their own land. I will pasture them on the mountains of Israel, in the ravines and in all the settlements in the land, and I will tend them in a good pasture. Imagine a nation that is lost, confused, lacking moral purpose, examining and thinking about what is it that God is doing to them. Why are we abandoned? And suddenly God's word is shared with them, is revealed to them. And I am seeking my people, said the Lord. I, like a shepherd, am going out and looking for them, encouraging them and blessing them. I will tend them in a good pasture and the mountain heights of Israel will be their grazing land. He assures them that there are good times ahead. For us in the United States, this pandemic is raging. Thousands upon thousands of people are dying. The infection rate is almost 1.8 million people every day. This is brutal. Churches are locked and shut down. And all of us are 
stay in a lockdown mode. And we are saying, Lord, for how long is this world going to be like this? It's almost like Noah in the ark. The whole world is in liquidation. The whole world has been affected by, by this pandemic. And we are called to be responsible people. Wear our masks wherever we go. Make sure we wash our hands and not touch surfaces. And keep a healthy physical distance between each other so that we do not infect the other. It's in this state of calamity that we are asking the Lord for mercy, for his intervention. The nations, the governments of the nations are being brought down to their knees. And the encouraging word of the Lord in verse 17, as for you, my flock, this is what the sovereign Lord says, I will gather you. I will judge between one sheep and another, between rams and goats. Is it not enough for you to feed on this good pasture? Must you also trample the rest of the pasture with your feet? Is it not good enough for you to drink clear water? Must you also muddy the rest with your feet? Must my flock feed on what you have trampled and drink what you have muddied with your feet? Is the indig indignant indictment of the Lord. There is inequality in our world. There is a gr growing disparity between the haves and the have-nots. There are food lines. People sitting in their cars desperately going to food banks for food because they can't afford to pay their bill. My brothers and sisters, may the Lord have mercy on us. We are called to be particularly sensitive of the needs of others during this time of global pandemic. Morning, David. And the Lord in Ezekiel chapter 34 says in verse 25, I will make a covenant of peace with them and rid the land of the savage beasts so that they may live in the wilderness and sleep in the forest in safety. I will make them and the places surrounding my hills a blessing. I will send down showers in seasons. There will be showers of blessing. The trees will yield their fruit and the ground will yield its crops. The people will be secure in their land. They will know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from the hands of those who enslaved them. My dear brothers and sisters, I am here on the mountain tops of the Eagles Ridge in Galena in Illinois. Tomorrow I will be driving down to Des Moines, Iowa to meet with their bishop, Alan Stark. I am seeking the Lord's will and I am praying for all these states that I drive through that the Lord will be gracious and merciful to this land that has this pandemic. Lord, have mercy on us. And as I look at this in verse 27b, they will know that I am the Lord when I break the bars of their yoke and rescue them from the hands of those who have enslaved them. They will no longer be plundered by the nations nor the wild animals devour them. They will live in safety and no one will make them afraid. What an encouraging word to a people that are being ravaged by this pestilence, Corona 19.
19, COVID-19. In verse 30, the Lord says, then the people will know that I, the Lord their God, am with them, and that the Israelites are my people, declares the Sovereign Lord. You are my sheep, and the sheep of my pasture, and I am your God, declares the Sovereign Lord. You know, as I was thinking about Christ the King, in this prophetic oracle in Ezekiel 34, God promises them the Messiah. God promises them a way out, his solution to the human predicament, the, the realities of injustice, oppression, inequalities, hunger, And the Lord is saying, I will place over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he will tend them and he will tend them and be their shepherd. I, the Lord, will be their God, and my servant David will be the prince amongst them. I, the Lord, have spoken. Our Lord Jesus is from the root of Jesse the line of David. He was born in Bethlehem, the city of David, the house of bread. And today, our prayer is, on this day of thanksgiving, come, Lord Jesus, come and restore justice in the land. Come, as the returning glorious King in glory. Come as the judge of the universe. Redeem your people, restore your people, restore the land so that we might live in peace and equity. May the tensions that exist in our land and amongst our people, I pray that it will be gone. And so today as I choose this song, now thank we all our God. I pray that you will join me. Who reigns in high 
St. Catherine, and a happy Thanksgiving to each and every one of you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Have a wonderful day. Tomorrow, I will be driving down to Des Moines, Iowa, and I pray that the Lord will bless each one of us. Do continue to pray for me as I travel in this pandemic ravaged land, praying for God's peace and health, and that the peoples of this land may put their trust in the Lord. God bless you, and now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you and your families, even though you may be separated. May the Lord bless and keep you. In Jesus' name, amen. Remember, my brothers and sisters, to be grateful today and to be thankful for all that the Lord has given. And I pray that you will experience God's richest blessing. And remember always that when God blesses us, it is always so that we can be a blessing to others. So in the meanwhile, be blessed, stay blessed, but pass that blessing on to others. Bye-bye.